Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Shula Ruler here, bringing you a video on determining the number of branch circuit positions in an electrical panel based off of 8108. Uh, this would be out of the 2018 version of the Canadian Electrical Code. Let's get started. Before we get rolling on actually determining the panel spaces, we need to know there are two factors that will actually affect the number of branch circuit positions available in a panel. The first one being, what is the required ampacity of the service or feeder conductors? This is the number that we use after calculating what is the demand of the service, what is the calculated load divided by that 240 volts. That is the required ampacity towards that service or feeder conductor. That's the number that we bring with us to 8108 to determine the panel spaces. The second factor that affects it is, is there a central electric furnace provided for? This is going to assist us in determining the number of panel spaces as well, whether there is or isn't one available. So let's jump right into it. The first situation we're going to look at is where our required ampacity is up to and including 60 amps. If we have up to and including 60 amps, we don't need to concern ourselves with the second portion, which is determining whether there's a central electric furnace provided for. This just covers kind of all situations. We are required to have 16 120 volt equivalent spaces. Now those equivalent spaces, that is single pole breakers. Basically we need 16 single pole breaker spaces. The code goes into detail stating that at least half of those shall be double pole, as well as in sub rule one, it discusses that we need to have space for two 35 amp double pole breakers. That is all included in these 16 120 volt equivalent spaces. The next situation that we take a look at is where we have more than 60 amps, but not exceeding 100 amps. And that is inclusive of that 100 amps as well. So our calculated required ampacity, if it falls between above 60 and not exceeding 100 amps, we are required to have 24, again, of these 120 volt single pole equivalent spaces in this panel. Again, it's not asking us or it's not important whether there is a central electric furnace provided for or not, it does not stipulate in the code as far as that is concerned. In this next example, our required ampacity is now more than 100 amps, but not exceeding 125 amps inclusive. And in this example as well, we're going to have a central electric furnace provided. Now, if I have a central electric furnace provided, I once again only require 24 of those 120 volt single pole equivalent spaces. The idea being that this central electric furnace really only requires a two pole breaker to supply it, therefore not needing the extra spaces that would be required if we don't have the central electric furnace provided for. Our next example is exactly that. So our required ampacity is exactly the same as the last example. We're looking at more than 100 amps, but not exceeding 125 amps inclusive. But in this case, a central electric furnace is not provided. Because a central electric furnace is not provided, we are now required to have six additional spaces because we no longer have that two pole breaker supplying that central electric furnace. This could be something like baseboard heaters individually in each room. We're going to require a little bit of extra space in our panel tub. In this case, exactly where we have more than 100 but not exceeding 125 amps, we are required to have 30 of those 120 volt equivalent spaces. In our next example, we're now more than 125 amps, but not exceeding 200 amps inclusive. A central electric furnace is provided in this example. And because our central electric furnace is provided, we are again only required to have 30 of those 120 volt equivalent single pole spaces. Again, the idea being that this furnace only takes up two of those panel spaces in that breaker. Our final example, we exceed 125 amps and a central electric furnace is not provided. As in the previous example where we did not have an electric furnace provided, we're going to require extra space again in the panel. This time, because we're above 125 amps, we're going to require an additional 10 spaces for again, our baseboard heaters or what other method of heating we have that is not a central electric furnace, meaning we're going to be taking up more space in our panel to heat our dwelling unit. In this case, we are required to have 40 120 volt equivalent spaces. 
I've thrown together a quick chart, just kind of a reference if you want. Feel free to pause the video, copy it down however you want, but this kind of takes us through the last couple examples that we did there, just determining again on the left what is the required ampacity of the service or feeder conductor. And then the next question, is there a central electric furnace? You'll notice the first two I have not applicable there because it's not something that we need to take into consideration. Past that point, then we do need to worry about if there is or is not a central electric furnace provided for. Just to finish off the video, we're going to take a look at 8108 subrule 3, which is determining the number of branch circuit positions in a dwelling unit of an apartment or similar building. This is very similar to what we just looked at. It's actually a lot easier to navigate because really there's only two choices that we deal with. How the heating is done is not something that comes into effect in this. All we're really worried about is what is the required ampacity of our service or feeder conductor. So starting with our first example. Our required ampacity, if it is up to and including 60 amps, we are required to have eight of those 120 volt equivalent single pole spaces. That's it. Our next example, our required ampacity is more than 60 amps. If your required ampacity is more than 60 amps, there's no top ceiling on that. We are required to have 12 of those 120 volt equivalent spaces. If you found this video helpful, feel free to hit that like button down there, hit the subscribe button, and then don't forget to hit that little bell notification button for upcoming future videos. Thanks for sticking around and watching. We'll see you next time.